Hey everyone, how's it going today? So before we get into this video, I just wanted to say that my name is Mike. This is my channel, Coding with Mike. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like. I really appreciate it. I make all kinds of videos for programming, like backend, frontend, full stack, web development, even game development. So if you want to see more tutorials just like this, go right ahead and hit that subscribe button. It lets me know that my content is something that people are enjoying. All right, onto the video. So the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open up our command panel and install SQLite 3 by typing npm i SQLite 3. Next, we're gonna make a new file. We're gonna call this file app.js. Now we're gonna to need to declare a variable here called SQL. Then we're gonna say const SQLite 3 equals require. And what we're gonna do is require SQLite 3 and then the method verbose. I'm actually going to move this down to the bottom because really we should have our requirement statements up at the top. Okay, so what are we going to be doing here? We're going to be connecting to a database. We're going to be creating a table, dropping a table, and that's all we need for right now. The next thing we can do is make a new file. Let's call this test.db. This is gonna be our SQLite database. So now in connect to DB, let's make a new variable, let's call it DB. Let's make it equal to new SQLite3. Database. And then what we're gonna pass this method is the root, the route, which for us is gonna be test.db. Then we're also gonna pass it SQLite3 period, open, read, write. If you wanted to just be able to read, you would pass a read, but we want to be able to read and write. Next, we're going to need a method. Now, this is going to take in an error, and we're just going to say, if there's an error, return console error. And we're going to send the error message. This is something that we're going to be doing a lot, so you're going to be copying and pasting this quite a few times. Let's run it. All right, no problems here, perfect. Next up, let's create our table. We can do that by first creating some SQL. What we can say here is create table users, and then in parentheses, we're gonna say ID. This is gonna be a primary integer. So it's gonna be integer primary key. Then we're gonna get the first name last name, username, password, and email. Now the reason that we do integer primary key is because we want it to auto increment. So that will be super helpful for just giving us that constant ID. The next thing we're gonna type is db.run and we're gonna actually run the SQL that we just created. We can do that by passing the SQL in here Then we can run it. Now, if we run it again, we should get an error that the table users already exist. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see here is this error message because that means that it worked the first time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna comment this out and I'm gonna show you how to drop a table. Now I'm gonna be using DB run again, but no SQL. I'm just gonna type the SQL directly in to the function. These are two alternate ways of doing it. I think it's better to have SQL as variable personally because you could get into some crazy queries and you don't want to cloud it up too much. So I would recommend doing that, especially for longer queries. All right, now our table's been created again. So what's next? Next up, we're gonna insert data into the database. So in order to do this, we're gonna set SQL equal to insert into users. Now we're gonna pass all of the rows that we want to insert into. So we've got first name, last name, username, password, email. We're skipping ID because that's gonna be auto-incremented. Then for the values, we're just gonna pass a question mark. 
and we're going to pass one question mark for each one. So that should be five in total. Now what we can do is run the SQL. We're going to pass a bracket and an error. Now this is going to be the same thing that we had earlier where we're going to say if there's an error, you want to return that error message. So the whole point of these brackets are we're essentially going to put the values in and they have to go in order. So the first one's going to be the first name, second one last name, third one username, fourth one password, fifth one email. So Mike and then you can say Michelson and you can enter whatever mock data you want for this. It really doesn't matter what you put in here. The important thing is just that we get the data in there. Now that that's been entered, I'm going to enter in a second user. Let's name this one Fred. And now we should have two users in the database. I'm going to comment all this out. The next thing we're going to do is this, I'm going to show you how to query the database. So we're going to do a select statement here, which hopefully you're familiar with. If you're not familiar with SQL, I do have a good tutorial on SQLite. So you might want to check that out first. This is a very simple select statement. We're just going to select everything from the table. So we're here, instead of db run, we're going to say db all, pass the SQL, an empty bracket because we have no values. And again with the error, except this time it's also going to take in rows. And you'll see why in a second. So paste the error message. And if there's not an error, what we're going to be doing here, instead of returning, we're going to say rows for each. And for each one of the rows, we're just going to console log them. And we got an error here. That's strange. Okay, it worked this time. Maybe I just didn't run it. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so yes, we have the ID, first name, last name, username, password, email, and you'll see that those IDs auto filled in just like they're supposed to. That is awesome. That's exactly what we want here. Next up is going to be update and delete. So first let's update. So what we can do here is say SQL equals update users, let's set first name equal to question mark where ID equals question mark. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to say db.run sql, a bracket. Now we're going to need to fill in those question marks. So the first one was the ID. So the ID is going to be one. Sorry, the second one was ID. The first one is first name. Let's change that first name to Jake. And then let's pass another one of these error methods which once again in this callback function, we're going to say if error return console error, run it. And let's see. Perfect. His name is Jake where the ID is one. That's exactly what we want. Awesome. Let's comment that out. Lastly, we're going to be doing a delete statement. This is basically going to be the same thing, so we're just going to copy and paste this for now. 
let's say delete data, uncomment this, and let's change it around a little bit. We're going to just be taking an ID here, and we're going to change the SQL to delete from users where ID equals question mark. All right, let's run this. And look at that. The first one's gone, so now we only have ID2 left. That's exactly what we wanted to see. All right, and with that, that's the end of this tutorial. If you found this helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. And if not, let me know in the comments too, because maybe I can help you out. Have a great day. Take it easy.